Welcome to your online coffee break, where we discuss bite-sized topics that inspire, educate, and entertain. Here's your host, a software innovator, award-winning marketer, and astronomy and space buff, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks for joining us today for your online coffee break. Today, I'd like to welcome to our show my special guest, Plum. Plum is a songwriter, recording artist, performer, and author. She's sold more than 500,000 albums and over 2 million singles worldwide. Her new album, Beautifully Broken, includes the title track for the recently released film of the same name. She also just released her book called Fight For Her, Even If You Have To Fight Her. Her book is a moving challenge to women of all ages to fight for each other, even if that means fighting with each other using love, hope, and grace. Plum, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. That's a uh, really, really humbling introduction. So thank you. <laughs> well, you deserve that. But I found out something very interesting. Um, I believe you were born in Indianapolis, which is where I'm recording this. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So what took you from here to becoming such a successful singer in Nashville, I believe, is where you're now? I do live in Nashville. Um, my dad's job, he was um, a Delta Airlines employee. Nice. And he um, got a job offer at their hub in Atlanta. And so about 15, 20 minutes south of the Atlanta airport in Fayetteville, Georgia, we moved um, at the very end of second grade for me when I was eight. Okay. And then I lived in Atlanta, um, the Atlanta area, uh, about a year after high school and then moved to Nashville and have basically been here ever since. But my roots are all Indiana, all my extended families, Indiana, but my dad's job is what moved us. And so I, I understand that's what brought me here too. As a matter of okay. fact, now I understand in Atlanta is, is that where you got started uh, in singing in church and school? Well, yeah, I, I, my first solo ever, I think I was three, which was in Indiana. Three. Um, wow. <laughs> I, I sang in church with my dad one Sunday and have never looked back, but, um, it was in Atlanta where I got really involved in chorus at school and choir at church and then started singing at, you know, coffee shops and nursing homes and homeless shelters and like little opportunities where they needed music. I would bring a karaoke machine and a cassette of a, a like a karaoke track really? <laughs> on a cassette recorder or cassette tape. Mm -hmm. And I just had a blast. And then at some point I was, I guess I was probably 15 or 16 and my youth pastor's brother-in-law had come to our church to visit and heard me sing a solo that day and brought me to Nashville to do some recording. And that kind of flung a craving on me, which opened a door of opportunity to singing backup for someone more professional. And then that led to singing backup for more and more people and then led me to the studio of singing mm -hmm. backup for Amy Grant. Wow. And so it just kind of kept building. And then a record label called me about me. And I was like, is this about backup singing? And they were like, no, and I was 20, almost 21 when that mm -hmm. phone call came. And now I'm 43 and I've been plum ever since. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Now, I understand you actually went independent. Was that just last year? I did. Last June the 2nd, uh, last year, I started my own independent label, which I've been trying to do for about four years. Mm -hmm. And finally, I uh, was able to, to accomplish that. And so um, just recently partnered with Centricity, um, did a licensing agreement with them. So they're partnering with me, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's called just on music. How did that change recordings now that you have your own label? Oh, just, it's a lot more responsibility, but it's a lot more freedom. That's good. Um, it's honestly, because it's more responsibility, I think my work ethic has been sharpened and I, so I have to be more intentional and I work harder, but the reward is different where it's like, man, we got that thumbnail photo put on iTunes. We like, like we did it. It wasn't somebody over there in their office that, you know, has this, that, you know, that's their, their job, but it's like, we right. did it, our team. And so we're a, a solid team of three specifically, but then, you know, one of us has an assistant, another one of us has an assistant. And so, you know, it's collaboratively about five people that are kind of being delegated to do stuff right now. And so it's a small uh, cool. It's a small label, essentially, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's it's just a big deal to me. So, yeah, well, I tell you, you can't tell it's a small label because your new album, Beautifully Broken, is just wonderful. I love that. Now, uh, obviously, music tells stories uh, and yours tell stories about your life, the lives of the people closest to you. 
how is Beautifully Broken different or similar to that? It's um, more about me than most of my records really? have ever been. Um, I think being vulnerable and really knowing yourself um, is not as easy as it sounds. Um, Cause sometimes you don't even know, well, you'll learn something new about yourself. I'll say that like, you'll be in a situation, you have an experience where you felt prideful or you felt insecure or you felt tempted or you felt jealous or you felt um, weak. Mm -hmm. uh, just you'll, you'll be in a situation where you're like, man, I didn't, I didn't know that I would respond that way. Or I didn't know that I would react like that. And so I think throughout the course of 2016, I had a lot of experiences that were new for me. Mm -hmm. And I saw sides of myself that were broken that I didn't really realize were either still broken or that were broken at all. And it was inspiring to me to write about that. It was therapeutic for me to write about that. Mm -hmm. There's accountability in writing about that. But even beyond that, I was like, man, when I write a song, I know that I'm not the only one that this could encourage even just one person. And somebody had put on social media somewhere a quote that said, um, when making a difference in one person's life is no longer satisfying enough, put your pen down, take a break. Hmm. And I was like, it is inspiring to me. It is enough for me to know that this song could reach one person because it was, you know, as I was writing, it was really helpful to me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, if this helps no one else, praise God for that. But at the same time, I, I have a feeling that this is going to reach more. And so every song is a story of, of true brokenness that comes from a real personal place or, or there's a few that come from some very intimate relationships of mine. One of which that comes to mind is a song called crazy about you. It's probably my favorite song that I, my co-writers, um, uh, late mother-in-law um, struggled with depression and, and a number of things like many of us do. I struggle right. with depression myself. And um, and I don't know how familiar you are with the pastor that, you know, committed. Very familiar suicide. with that. And that was due to depression. It was a shame. Yeah. It was just, he committed suicide a few days ago. And and it was like, it is, I mean, Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain and just left and right, you hear about people. Right. Um, and, and that story we were talking about brokenness and how he was like, man, I wish, you know, she'd been fighting so long and it was like, she didn't, she didn't really believe that God loved her as she was and that she was enough. Like mm -hmm. she kept fighting to, to be enough when she already was. And she gave up her fight and he was like, I wish she just could have given God another chance right. to let him romance her heart. And as he was talking about that, there's other songs on the record related to brokenness specifically maybe the circumstances are different mm -hmm. but brokenness is the overarching theme to the record which is why beautifully broken is not just a song about that but i felt like that was a great title for the whole record because it spoke to the whole record like brokenness is among us each of our stories are unique and 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 at the same time they're not and i think the uniqueness is in us but our circumstance is not unique and that should actually um, give someone some hope right now that you're not the first person to ever do what you've done. So true. You're not the first. You're not the first person to have done to you what's been done to you. You're not the first person to have that thought. You're not the first person. And so, in any and even if you were, God is not freaked out by your brokenness. He's not, you know, scratching his head wondering how can I make something beautiful out of this? How can I use this for my kingdom? He already knows. And so, just belonging to Him and Him being our Creator is beautiful enough. And so that's what beautifully broken specifically is about. No matter what you've done or what's been done to you, what really matters is who you belong to and what he can do with your brokenness. And, but again, like we named the whole record that because of songs like crazy about you, that's it's just another story of brokenness, but it involves suicide. There's mm -hmm. another story of brokenness that involves becoming a single mother. And uh, there's another story of brokenness that becomes, or, or that's, you know, inspired by my own, day to day feeling like an acrobat feeling like I'm trying to be strong and fast and, and spinning plates and, you know, being wife, being mom, being author, being singer, songwriter, being friend, being daughter. And it's like, and then I drop those spinning plates, you know, I'm you know spinning them and I, and they, and they all crash sometimes. And you're just like, okay, 
And then God says, begin again. And just the grace in that. And so I just wanted to, I wanted people to be connected in their brokenness. At the same time, I wanted them to, to be able to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Um, Whether it's a brokenness that they know, like anxiety, depression, you know, addiction, or pride that they they aren't as aware of. I wanted to give them a tool to create the opportunity to speak the truth out loud so that their heart can believe it. A a tour manager that I worked with has said the heart will not believe what the mouth will not speak. And so I believe music is a tool to be able to speak truth. And then your heart believes it, that you're not alone and that God can do something beautiful with this. So I I love it. And just all the songs on the album are very touching. And I do love a beautifully broken, um, your verse, a million scars doesn't change whose you are. I just think that's fantastic. I also love the video <laughs> for, for our uh, viewers, audience who hasn't seen the video. It's got this amazing Alice in Wonderland theme. Where did that come from? Are you a big Alice in Wonderland fan? How'd that come about? Well, you know what? What's funny is I'm a huge Tim Burton fan. Ah, yes. <laughs> director. And his version of Alice in Wonderland um, has my favorite actor in it, which is Johnny Depp. Ah, okay. And my fashion icon, um, I have two. Audrey Hepburn is one and Helena Bonham Carter who is Tim Burton's now ex-wife, but she plays, you know, the queen. And so those are three huge things. So the fact that they're all like, they're all together in that one Mm -hmm. um, is just, it's one of my favorite movies. And I also, on top of that, collect teacups. And there is a a cafe here in Nashville where I live that they have this, um, this, uh, this piece of art in the cafe that's up in the ceiling and it's all these teacups. And I asked them one time, I said, you know, what, what is this about? Cause I collect teacups and the cafe is associated with a farm that takes broken women and helps restore them. Wonderful. And they said to me that those teacups represent us. We're, we're valuable. We're beautiful, but we're also easily broken. And to be reminded of that. And I, when they said that to me, I was really special. Well, it is a fun video and a fantastic song, but I would love to switch gears. You have a wonderful new book out called Fight for Her, Even If It's Fight Her. What inspired you to write that book? That, that little girl that I just talked about. She was, she's 10. She just turned 10. And when she was about two or three, um, she was just having kind of a typical toddler moment, kind of, you know, fussing and, and not getting in her car seat like she was supposed to and putting her shoes on like she was supposed to. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing myself say, you know what, you're going to put those shoes on. You're going to get in your car seat. You're going to change your attitude. And she's very upset about that. And I said, I'll fight for you. Even if I have to fight you. And as soon as it came out of my mouth, I was like, that is a book one day. I don't know when I'm not sure exactly what it will entail, but that's a book one day. And between then and now, Um, I thought it would be a mother daughter kind of parenting book about my experience as a daughter and now having a daughter. However, I realized after I got in there and I was writing it, this is for everyone. Right. And, uh, and I would say, I mean, yes, I wrote from a female's perspective because I'm a female and it's probably directed more specifically to females. However, conceptually it's universal that when we really love people, fighting for them and what's best for them sometimes involves conflict of fighting with them. So I have, I have two boys as well. I fight for them, even if I have to fight them. So the concept, whether you have, whether you're a a male or a female listening to this, whether you have sons or daughters or the people around you are male or female, like the the concept applies to, I feel like all humanity, but um, I realized, you know, this is not just about me as a daughter or having a daughter. Like there's a lot of women out there more specifically that may or may not ever have a daughter, but every woman around them or every man around you, mm-hmm. they are a daughter. They are a son. The song Fight For You? Yeah. Is that related to your book? Yes. I wrote that in response to um, while I was, I literally recorded the record, wrote and recorded the record while sim- simultaneously writing the book, which mm-hmm. looking back, I'm not sure how I did that. It truly must have been God, but I, remember sitting next to the producer while we're like recording the record with my laptop open and multiple times he would think that what I was looking at on my laptop 
was like the lyrics to the song that we were working on or, mm. you know, emails or something. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm writing a chapter in the book. So it was like simultaneously. And so they do, the record really does speak to the book. And so we have the packaging of both look very similar because they truly were like simultaneously written and recorded and speak to one another. And so fight for you was birthed out of, Hey, I'm writing this book called fight for her. And so I didn't think that fight, I'm going to fight for her, like didn't really sing quite the same. And I felt like fight for you mm -hmm. just kind of, it, 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 at least kind of, um, made a little more ambiguous in that it, boy or girl, I'm going to fight for you, even if I have to fight with you, because that's what you do when you love someone. And so, um, but that's my little girl playing ukulele. At the end. The oh, I love very, that. So, yeah. So she's, you know, she's in the Beautifully Broken video. She's playing ukulele. But the video that we're going to make for Fight For You is truly supposed to be a she and I super funny, like super lighthearted, like you want to watch it with your kids kind of thing. And so um, we're excited about doing that here in the near future. Well, Plum, I can't thank you enough for just taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today and, and, and share, uh -huh. share your uh, feelings and passion. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Online Coffee Break. Wow, I really enjoyed speaking with Plum today. Her passion behind her music and her new book is just evident. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit her website at plummusic.net. I want to thank Plum for joining us today. I want to thank you, our audience, for tuning in today. If you'd like to comment on today's episode, you can go to our website at onlinecoffeebreak.com. Leave a comment there. You can also call us at 317-862-4700. Leave a comment there. We just might share it on the air. You can also follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Online Coffee Break, or you can subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. Thanks again for listening today. See you next time. God bless.